Hello students, in this video we'll prove the contracted Bianchi identity. So let's recall that Bianchi's second identity stated that the R covariant derivative of R L of the Riemann Christoffel tensor J N P plus the N derivative of R L dot J P R plus the P covariant derivative of R L dot J and then R N is equal to zero. And then what we can do is we can immediately trace this, right? Because we know that the compatibility of the metric, right? I know that the metric, anything over here A and then G B C is equal to zero. And so that means I can put the metric inside. I can put the any raising or lowering inside or outside of the covariant tensor over here, right? And so let me do that. So I'm going to do a GMP and then G, uh, GMP. Yeah, so let's do a, let's first contract, right? So I'm going to first contract and get that down. So I'm going to do an LM, M like that, of this identity. So let's apply this, applied to Bianchi gives R, M, J, N, P, the R covariant derivative of that, plus the N covariant derivative of R, M, J, P, R, plus the P covariant derivative of R, R, R what? R, M, J, R, N is also equal to zero, right? So we also get this lowered version of the Bianchi identity. Now we're gonna G, we're gonna do this now. So by the compatibility again, we'll do one more iteration of this. I'm gonna do a G M P G J N applied to the second Bianchi identity. Gradient R, R, M, J, N, P, and then plus N, R, M, J, P, R, plus covariant derivative P, R, M, and then J, R, N, like that. This is equal to zero, of course, right? And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing over here, and what I'm gonna do is I am going to actually do one thing over here. I'm gonna flip this over here. I'm gonna flip the P and the N. The P is gonna go over here, and then the N's gonna go over here, and that makes that negative over there. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna hit that with a GMP over here, right? And then, um, that's right. And so I want to hit that with the GMP, good. And so that would be a GJN negative, and then a G delta uh, gradient R. And then now the M is going to turn into a P, right? So then I have an R, M, M, J. The M is going to go upstairs to a P, of course, right? So that's going to turn into a P, turn into a P. And then we're gonna have a dot, and then a J, and then a P, and then an N like that. Okay, so let's make sure we make, that makes sense, right? So I flip the N and the P, that gives me a negative sign, right? And I hit the G M P, that's gonna raise that that M to a P, and then I have what's left over is gonna be a J, then a P, then an N. Good. Now the next term over here, what I want to do is I want to hit this with what? I'm gonna try to hit this term over here. What do I want to do? I want to hit this term, I want to get the P, I want to get the P up top, because the P is already in the right spot. So this is going to be a plus G, J, N, and then I'm going to have a what? I'm going to have an R, and then the J, go, the M goes to a P, and then a J, P, R, like that. Okay, great. And then on this last term over here, I'm going to hit with a G, um, uh, what should we do now? So we'd like to hit this term over here with the... Um, Let's see, we want to do G, J, N. So I'm going to flip these things over here. I'm going to flip the, uh, let me flip the J and the, uh, do I want to do that? Let me think how I'm going to flip these yet. So um, there's no P's to trace on over here. So I want, to, I want to trace on the N. So I'm going to flip the N. I'm going to flip the M and the J. And I'm going to flip the R and the N. So if I flip the R and the M, that, I hope the M and the J becomes a J 
and then an M. So that's one flip, so that's one negative sign. And I'll have an R and then an N. And I'm going to flip those to an N and then an R, right? So I get two negative signs. So that's the same thing over there. So I haven't changed anything. But now I have the J and the N. So this is going to be a plus G and then an MP now. And now what I'm going to do is the G, the J is going to turn into a what? The J is going to turn into an, go up into an N, right? So it's going to be R, N, M, N, R. The dot right there is equal to zero. So that's the effect of tracing. Great. Now there's a few other things to do. So one intermediate step is the following. This is, I'm just gonna write one more thing over here. This is gonna be G, J, N, J, N. And then this is gonna be gradient R of the Ricci of J, N. That's the Ricci tensor of J, N by definition. Then this thing over here is gonna be G, J, N. This is going to be the Ricci, and of course, what am I missing here? I'm missing an uh, n covariant derivative over here. So I think an n covariant derivative was missing. So put that over there in your notes. And what's missing over here is going to be a p covariant derivative. p covariant derivative. Great. All right. And so what's going on now? I'm going to have an n covariant derivative of r Ricci of jr. Good. And then plus over here, g m p. And that's going to be Ricci, gradient P, Ricci of M, R, like that, is equal to zero. I'm using the fact that when you trace on the second entry of these metro, of these remaining tensors, you get the Ricci tensor. Great. All right, now, of course, what do we have over here? We look at this first, I'm knowing the fact that I can commute, I can commute metric tensors into a covariant derivative, so I'm going to do that. So this is going to be negative R of what? I have a G, J, N, R, j n that's the curvature invariant plus i'm going to raise this i'm going to raise this covariant derivative to a contravariant derivative so what we're going to have over here is we're going to have a contravariant derivative a j contravariant derivative of r j r i'm going to raise this to a contravariant derivative plus an m contravariant derivative of r m r is equal to zero excellent and so now this is what? This is, of course, is the scalar curvature. So this is negative the r covariant derivative of the scalar curvature r. So that's scalar curvature. Plus, now you're tracing over j, and you're tracing over m over here. So those two terms are the same. So this is 2 of the contravariant derivative j of r. Ricci j r is equal to 0. And this is the contracted Bianchi identity, right? So this is my contracted Bianchi identity. Okay? Like so. It states that the covariant derivative of the scalar curvature, the R covariant derivative scalar curvature, is twice the contravariant derivative to trace the contravariant derivative J on RJR. Beautiful. And so what this allows me to do now is you might say, okay, so what does this, what use is this? So let me remind you that we have our Einstein tensor. So what's the Einstein tensor? So we're called the Einstein tensor. The Einstein tensor is Eij, like that. And the Einstein tensor is going to be what? It's going to be the Ricci tensor, Rij, and then minus one half, minus one half of the scalar curvature R, and then Gij. That's our Ricci tensor over there. And so now what can I say? Now, what if I was to do a I covariant derivative of this Einstein tensor? It would be an I covariant derivative of this expression over here, Rij minus one half R G I J, right? And so that would be equal to what? So that would be equal to the covariant derivative R I J, and then minus one half the product rule. So it'd be the covariant, it'd be R, the covariant derivative of G I J, which is zero, then minus one half G I J, the covariant derivative of what? Um, the covariant derivative of um, R of, of R, like that. The I covariant derivative of R, right? That's an I covariant derivative. Okay, now we're almost done, because what can I say? This is equal to the I covariant derivative of R I J. This term over here is zero by the metric properties. That's going to be a zero. And then what? And then I have this minus one half. And then I'm going to take that I upper and bring it to a lower. So that's going to be a J covariant derivative of R. But by the what? I know that the trace of this, Ricci, of this 
this basically the divergence essentially of this covariant i with an rij is equal to what? Is equal to the one half of that scalar curvature. So this equation over here, if I just if I if I take divide that two and put a one half over here, right? Then we see that this minus this is equal to zero. So this whole thing is equal to zero. That implies that the covariance derivative, if I trace the covariance derivative of the Einstein tensor with the first entry of it, I get zero. And this is an essential part of the Einstein field equations because later what you want to see is you're going to compare this Einstein, the Einstein field equations state that the Einstein tensor is up to, is a constant proportional. So the Einstein equations, if I were to do the Einstein equations, they would say that this Einstein tensor is equal to some constant kappa, which I can never remember. It's like 8 pi over the speed of light to the fourth power or something like this, times a gravitational constant, some gravitational constant. Times what? Times the stress energy tensor over here. So that's a stress energy tensor. And by conservation of energy, I know that if I do the covariant derivative of the stress energy tensor, I have to get zero. So that tells you that the Einstein field equations are consistent. And you can basically put it and you can sort of modify these things to put like a cosmological constant times a metric tensor in there as well. And so in further videos, we'll write down the Einstein field equation and we'll try to understand it from the partial differential equations perspective. But in the meantime, all it, it suffices to know this contracted Bianchi identity really helps you understand that the, con, that the covariant derivative of the Einstein tensor, if you trace on the covariant index and the first index of the Einstein tensor gives you zero, and that's an essential component in the study of general relativity. Thank you very much.